Hi everyone, I'm Chavali. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist assistant in Florida and I want to get into the schooling this week. I want to separate the schooling topic into two main sections, which is the pre-AA school requirements and then I want to do a second video on AA school requirements and schooling after AA school. So this will be part one of the schooling series. So then after the series of schooling, I do want to get into the cost of becoming a CAA. So stay tuned for that complete series. Again, if you have any questions or anything that I leave out, please leave them down below. First things first, I want to get into the basic overview of what you would need to do, whether you're going into AA school straight out of undergrad or whether you're going into AA school after a couple of years. Like medical school, um, to get into AA school, you don't necessarily have to be majoring in a science major. For example, you could be an English major, you could be a psychology major, you could be a mathematics major. You don't have to be a bio major or anything like that, but you do need to fulfill the prerequisite requirements. From what I could see online, it looks like you need to have a minimum of a B minus to C in the prerequisites. And the prerequisites are the standard prerequisites that you would need to take to go into medical school. So that would be your general chemistries, organic chemistry, biochemistry, physics, biology. Some schools require anatomy and physiology and some schools require statistics. So in terms of my journey, I wasn't even thinking about AA school because I didn't know it, it existed. So I had already taken all of these to, to go into the medical school route. So if you are on that journey, you're on the right path and you will most likely fulfill the requirements that you would need to go into AA school. Just check the websites, check the schools that you're applying to and see if you have them. And you, you might already be on the right journey to go into AA school. In terms of a minimum GPA you need, schools listed about 3.0, but then I looked on a couple of websites to see what was the average or competitive scores. And then on Emory, they had a matriculant statistics website and they listed that their students had an average about 3.4 in terms of their science GPA. And then when I looked at Colorado, it said that the average statistics for students nationwide was about 3.5. Other academic requirements that you'll need are the GRE or the MCAT. So you'll need to take a standardized exam for any of the schools that you want to get into. When I was applying, the GRE wasn't as common. Most schools were looking at the MCAT and now it looks like a lot of them have transitioned into accepting either the GRE or the MCAT with the exception of one school at this time that still requires the MCAT. From what I could see, the preferred scores for the GRE were above 50% for the percentile. And for the MCAT, it looked like schools were looking for about up above 500 to about 505 as your average requirement for the MCAT. So now that I've covered the academic requirements, I want to get into non-academic requirements. One of them was getting reference letters. All schools required a minimum of three reference letters, and it looked like one school required specifically a reference letter from a science professor. So if you're still in undergraduate, the undergraduate courses and you're still taking your classes, you're doing very well in a class, you go to office hours, look and talk to that professor about getting a reference letter for AA school. Another non-academic requirement is shadowing. Most schools require eight to 16 hours of shadowing a certified anesthesiologist assistant or an anesthesiologist. I do believe some people have shadowed CRNAs as well to get into school. Uh, you would have to get a letter of verification that you've shadowed and my roommate, he actually shadowed a CRNA family friend and it looks like they signed off on it. They were fine with it. You know, they recommended him to go to AA school and that fulfilled the requirement for shadowing as well. So another important thing to have on your application is direct patient interaction. Now, Colorado states that their average applicants have about six months of direct patient interactions, whether it's volunteering or paid work, and it would be about six months, a minimum of four hours per week. Some examples of paid direct patient interaction include being an EMT, a scribe, a medical assistant, certified nurse assistant, a dental anesthesiologist assistant, even nurses. In the year above my class, I know that there was someone that was a nurse previously and she graduated my program and is now wor working as a CAA. And one last example would be being a phlebotomist, but there's a lot of variety in the jobs that you can do that give you the direct patient interaction that will, again, help your application in getting to AA school. Other things you can do to get into AA school include community service, mission trips, and research. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about non-traditional applicants because I know that there's someone that commented that they have a finance background and they're looking to AA schooling and they are wondering if they could get into AA school. So I wanna give the example of one of my coworkers. He was a professor in New York City and he realized that he wanted to be more in medicine and he found out about the CA profession and he looked into it. And so he started taking the prerequisites in a, an affordable undergraduate college. He didn't want to take out any more loans that he had than what he had to for school. So he completed the prerequisites and at the same time he got into becoming an EMT 
and he did volunteer work as an EMT and that was sufficient enough for him to go into AA school and now he's a CAA alongside me at work. I also have a good friend of mine that was an assistant to an, a dental anesthesiologist. So he had experience be doing intubations and doing TIVAs and he had very good experience before he went into school and he had been a few years out of school. So he had to just find out if his prerequisites in science were sufficient and were not expired before he could apply. And he was able to apply with his prerequisites. So if you're one of those people that have been out of school for a while and has been in the medical field and you just wanna find out if your prerequisites are still good enough, just reach out to schools and see if they'll take you. So I also wanna mention that this is a great profession for respiratory therapists that are looking into anesthesia. I had three classmates of mine that were RTs previously. So they went through the RT program, the bachelor's program, and then they worked for a few years. I had one friend that worked for 10 years in the ICU as an RT and she went into anesthesia school and she, she did very well. It was different from what she had learned as um, a respiratory therapist. There were some differences, but it really helped her have great experience and she did extremely well in her clinical rotation. So if you're a respiratory therapist who's thinking about it, who may not wanna go into nursing school and get the bachelor's of nursing, go into ICU, and then go into CRNA school, I do believe that becoming an anesthesiologist assistant and going through that route could be a really great route for you to become an anesthesia provider. The application process is a holistic process. If you're someone that's going straight out of undergrad and you may not have as many years of clinical experience as someone that has been out of school for 10 years and is a respiratory therapist, I would say make sure that your GPA is strong, your GRE is strong, you have a lot of volunteer experience, you know, try to balance out your application. Now, if you're on the other end of that spectrum and you haven't been in school for five years, 10 years, make sure that you have great clinical experience that you really show commitment to the field. Your application is essentially showing that admissions committee that you are able to succeed in AA school and as a CA and that you have a commitment to healthcare and a commitment to the profession because there are hard times in our profession as anesthesia providers and they wanna know that you have the talent and the drive to succeed in school and beyond. I'll do my best to answer any remaining questions that people have about schooling. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more on the schooling next week.